go, guys. Wait, we're actually going to hop on. Here she comes. Hi. Happy Mother's Day. You're muted. There we go. Yeah. I was able to fix it. Okay, incoming yeah. Juliana. Awesome. Looks nice where you are. It is. You know, incoming I talk the the Nord. I'm saying it right. I um I'm talking all the time about spreading good vibes like wildflowers, and you should see all the dandelions out here. It is an amazing revolution happening. They're taking over the lawns, and I love it. Every minute of it. <laughs> all that free food and medicine. How's everyone doing this morning? Any special wishes for 1111? Main things I guess I wanted to get into was, you know, in honor of Mother Day, Mother's Day, um, you know, share a bit about parenting as a psychonaut. You know, I, uh, I'm new at being a parent, but I'm experienced in reparenting myself. I've been working with mushrooms, for example, for 18 years, probably cannabis even longer, I'd say. And, um, you know, there's been other, you know, things that I've worked with uh, since both substances and in physical practices like kundalini yoga and meditation, mindfulness, uh, things like this, uh, Reiki, you know, whether you're working with um, medicine as in herbology or homeopathy, uh, medicine as in food, as in laughter, as in uh, physical practice. Uh, they're all amazing tools for reparenting yourself, for tapping into that family karma and dissolving what was broken or what your ancestors were unable to complete or, um, yeah, or even like those parts of yourself that maybe were underdeveloped because your parents you know, are your parents for a reason, but there's always pieces that they're not able to fill that we need to take responsibility for and do ourselves. And mushrooms, for example, really teach us how to do that. They teach us how to get out of our own way, how to recognize family karma for what it is, how to be grateful for all the skills that our ancestors gave us, as well as forgive them and understand where they were coming from, why they weren't able to reach our standard, because it's our job to reach our own standard, if that makes sense. You know, there's all of these really miraculous uh, transformations that can happen by working with medicine, by doing the integration work, by doing the shadow work. Um, you know, my story, you know, while I was working with uh, these medicines for so many years, uh, there was a, a time in my life um, where I was really unhealthy, you know, in my early twenties, when I was in college for hospitality and tourism, uh, a lot of things were going wrong in my body. And one of the big things, uh, was, uh, I had cervical dysplasia and, and other issues and, and hemorrhaging in those areas because, you know, I put it to sexual trauma that was normalized in my family, uh, gene line and that it was my job to to heal that not just for me but for my ancestors and I did just that I was told at 21 years old that I would not be able to have kids and um, and most of the women and men in my family lines they had a thing about there being a boy born born first like those you know, ancient like kings, like I don't know why my family thought that they were like kings and queens and the firstborn needs to be a male. I don't know why that was so ingrained in my bloodline. Um, but, you know, I was told I couldn't have kids and I did. I, uh, I conceived my son and I um, and he was, yeah, my firstborn 
you know, I have many other children in my life, but I think I'm a one and done when it comes to uh, giving birth. I had an amazing experience, amazing pregnancy, amazing home birth. Uh, you know, the entire experience of parenting, while difficult, has been uh, really miraculous for me, very supernatural for me. And I believe part of that comes from uh, the gratitude and the responsibility uh, thrust upon me by working with uh, these medicines, this new understanding of how it all works and what my own purpose is here on earth. Um, you know, what, what was going on uh, in my early 20s was really stressful going to school um going into debt for something that you know I wasn't passionately aligned with you know hospitality and tourism that means a lot of alcohol um that means a lot of late nights that means you know work hard play hard attitude that means um busting your ass for tips and things like that because you're investing into essentially yourself you're going into a lot of debt and at a, at a very young age before your brain's fully developed when you sign those papers for a student loan. And um, so, yeah, you know, that was like, that was weighing on me. You know, I was one of the only kids to go to college. Uh, I had to work my way in there because I was expelled from high school and um and I took a couple of years off and I just worked and earned money. I moved out really young at 14 years old. And, um, and when I wanted to go back, I just went to the, to the college itself. And I said, look, I want to go here. They're like, okay, what experience do you have? Oh, well, I've been working in bars and working here and working there. And, you know, um, you know, it was like what my personal experience was. Oh, well, you should go to hospitality and tourism school okay, great. Sure. I'll do whatever you tell me because my brain's not fully developed and you guys want the money and I'm being conditioned that school is the way to do it. And, you know, it really just was a lot of pressure and a lot of stress. And I got really sick. I got sick like everybody else in my family that has drank a lot and stayed up late and partied hard and been miserable and um, put on the fake smile and warmed the makeup and you know, all of those, um, all those things. And eventually with all the travel, like, I mean, it wasn't all bad. Like I had a lot of fun. Don't get me wrong. I, I have life experience that most people would only dream of. I love my life. And, you know, even when I look back on the past and I think, you know, that's not who I am today, I still love and understand that those parts of me were the best I could do at that time. You know, and I was always a kind person and, um, and, you know, any mistakes, I, I own up to them, even the ones I didn't know how to own up to before, you know, I, as I heal in my own journey today, I, I own up to those things today. And, you know, I had to move, move beyond the sickness. And one time when I was uh, traveling, I was out in BC living out there on the ocean, very, very beautiful place. And, and I, and I heard this voice and I swear it was from the psychedelics or the angels. You know, I wasn't working from psych with psychedelics at the time, but it sounded like, like the calling was like that calling that you get when you're working with the psychedelics. It was a memory. It was a reminder. It was something divine coming through from, you know, other dimensions talking to me saying, Ashley, you got to get sober. You got to get to the roots of, you know, your own family karma. There's real work for you to do. And it doesn't include drinking. So I got sober, you know, I, at 25 years old, I was told I couldn't have kids at 21. At 25, I got sober. And I was a mom giving a home birth to my son at 27. So two years sober, and I was rewarded the greatest reward that I could ever have from from healing myself you know it gave me a lot of confidence but it also brought on a lot more challenges and you know I was scared how am I going to do this a single mom how am I going to do this when um you know I've taken so much time off work because I couldn't be sober and work in the hospitality and tourism industry you don't send a recovering alcoholic to a bar to go earn money it doesn't work that way you know and um 
so I was like how am I going to do any of this and so I got this baby in my belly and I knew that I could go and write about it write about how it is that I healed myself I could write about how um how it was eating healthy during a vegan pregnancy um you know I wasn't totally vegan I say vegan but it's because a lot of the food that I eat is plant-based and vegan people understand and ask about um um but I am not a vegan I don't eat any of that beyond meat stuff and I wanted to write about you know my personal diet and what I found and you know how it was that I was creating you know really nutritionally dense alternatives um yeah it was uh I don't know I guess yeah, the, the writing part, sharing these kinds of things, it was really important for me to do at the time, I think, because I needed to understand what I was going through so that I could see what was next. I had to get it out of me so that I could fill that space with a new life, a new life that I needed to create for Finn and I. Um, another thing is when I was, um, you know, preconception, conception time of my life, I was back in the psychedelic realm. You know, I, I found my way back to, to mushrooms again and, um, and to cannabis too. And, you know, I was healing my sleep. I was getting my circadian rhythm back. I, I was healing so many areas of my life and I was staying sober. And that was the most important part. Um, I was also doing uh, trip sitting and, uh, and field trips at the time. Field trips being uh, groups and trip sitting being individual sessions, uh, we'll say. And, um, and I, and I had to give that up too, because I was really scared as a mom that I would be shoved into um, a box and separated from my son. You know, that's happened to other family members of mine that have uh, gone, to, gone to jail and been separated. My dad was separated uh, from my sister and I for LSD and, you know, other things too in the past. And, you know, I didn't want that for me. And it was already in my family bloodline. I wanted better for myself. I knew that I was here to like heal that family karma and to um, be the change that I wanted to see in the world. You know, I saw what was wrong. I saw who the real villains are and who the real heroes were. And, you know, I decided I wanted to be on the heroin team. So I was working with the heroic dose uh, quite often and not only working with the medicine, but doing the integration work too. I was moving emotions through my body through yoga. I was uh, releasing things, even things that I love. And guess what? When I released psychedelics, it came back to me. Sometimes relationships come back. Sometimes it's, uh, you know, an idea that comes back. It's okay to release because if it's really meant for you, it really does come back. You know, um, my pregnancy was a, was a crazy time, but it was also very beautiful, very in, enjoyable I felt really good in my skin and my body I felt beautiful my hair and my nails were probably the best that they've ever been um you know I put on the the exact amount of weight that I needed it's 25 pounds um extra when you're pregnant and I was right on that dot it was uh pretty incredible so I was um I weighed in at 140 when uh when I had given birth to him and um or when I was at like my max pregnancy for him and you know I did the home birth all at home all natural it was a really um a strange experience I went into the uh when I chose which town I wanted to have Finn in uh where I wanted to be to give birth uh it was Dundas Ontario which is actually the waterfall capital of the world it's so beautiful for nature hikes and I spent months there I'd go to um art classes uh, with my big pregnant belly and I'd um, go watch the waterfalls and you know I was like still doing my adventure stuff too going through fences to like get onto these special peaks you know no no shame for me and I told my midwives when I found the uh, the clinic that I wanted to work with I said, look, I want to really have my son in the waterfall. And they're like, oh, no, you can't do that. And they start talking to me about the hospital and all these things. I'm like, we need to find a middle ground here. <laughs> I was like, we'll do it at my apartment. You know, I, um, yeah, I figured out all the details. Whenever they wanted to do any uh, interventions, any testing, any screenings, 
you know, I said no to all of that. When they talked to me about um, vaccines, I made the actual midwives, I made them go and get the boxes for all this stuff, for the antibiotic ointments they put on the eyes, uh, for any injections, including vitamin K and vitamin uh, D. I made them go look and they sh showed back up at my house and um, with the box and they looked at the ingredients and they said, no, no way. Like we understand why you're saying no. They didn't even know how many births have they done where they never check those ingredients, you know, but, but I did and I encouraged them to do their own research when it came to smoking uh, cannabis, which I did do uh, during uh, my pregnancy because um, it was helping me with sleep. I, there's no way I would take any over the counter medication. So if I wanted something to help me uh, with any discomfort, I went to something that was natural, natural, um, you know, the, the queen, you know, they, they work with cannabis for menstruation and pregnancy and things, you know, they also don't vaccinate. So when you're talking about the Royal family, you know, it's the way that they are is different from how they want media to be and how they portray themselves in the media. Like it's, you think, oh yeah, if they're pushing vaccines on everybody, then obviously they must take, be taking them themselves. Oh, if they're saying no to cannabis and no to mushrooms, then they must not be using those things themselves. But guess what? Mushrooms grow in the royal family's garden. Guess what? They do use cannabis for menstruation and, and other things. You know, the there's a lot of um, false perceptions out there. Um, you know, and I think that that is, you know, part of why they get away with so much of what they do because not everybody's looking into these details and the devil really is in the details. Um, yeah, one of my midwives actually, uh, after the birth, she waited, she did her two weeks with me uh, when I was a new mom with Finn, which was the most beautiful thing too, by the way, is because after he came out, um, he, he crawled while still connected to the umbilical cord, cord up to my boob and started breastfeeding right away on his own. He knew what to do. And I think because there was no drugs in my system, there was no anything. It was just so natural. And the midwives kept checking in on me. Like I didn't have to worry about driving home from a hospital. I didn't have to worry about talking to people or anything. I didn't invite anybody over for a while. Uh, I just... I just sat there with him. I was naked for probably the first two weeks when my milk flow was coming in. And I'm happy and grateful that I had that time. Uh, my midwives, as I said, would come in and check. And it was about two weeks in. And Olivia, one of my midwives, uh, she said that she was actually quit her job and was moving to British Columbia to start an eco home and, and bringing her family with her. And I was like, wow like it was totally my dream but I was so happy for her and that her inspiration from my experience of being so natural reminded her why she went into midwifery to begin with and that she wanted to do her practice different and that she wanted to live her life a little bit different you know there's a lot of challenges they challenged me on cannabis and they had to do the research they challenged me on vaccines and then they went and did the research uh, they challenged me on um, a few other things too. You know, there's, um, they, they check to make sure your heart's good. Um, they tell you, we're going to have to bring you to the hospital if the heart rate changes or anything. I'm like, I don't, I don't want those plans. The hospital is not on the plan for me. If my heart starts doing something, you're giving me cayenne pepper. You think I'm getting dehydrated? Guess what? I have a hydration solution that I made with like lemons and Himalayan salt and water that was sitting in my fridge. Uh, you know, if I started, um, you know, running out of energy or anything, I had spirulina that was there. I had everything planned and, and it inspired uh, one of my midwives enough that she changed her life and put it into alignment with where she really was meant to be. I wish I stayed in touch with her. They weren't allowed giving contact information or anything. And she's never uh, contacted me. But Olivia, if you're listening, please do because I love you, girl. <laughs> Um, when I had Finn as well, you know, I was blogging, as I said, and, um, some other things that, that started coming up was that 
I wanted to do more herbology myself. So I started selling some of my things in, um, in stores, tea blends, um, deodorants, toothpaste, things like that. I was trying to sell them on Facebook too, but Facebook would, uh, would take them down. So I just stayed local for word of mouth within my community. Some people came to my house, some people would go to different stores. Um, it was a, it was, um, a cool experience. I also uh, got my Reiki master's certificate in uh, the first few months after having Finn. I did have a Reiki master with me working uh, as a doula type. She wasn't a certified doula. She was a certified Reiki master, but she worked as my doula. And, um, and it was such a great experience. And she she offered to take Finn and I out into the country for uh, for a month. And we just lived off um get out of this house that neither one of us was uh was attached to uh I'm not sure it wasn't like renting but it was like house sitting or something and so we were there for for a month this beautiful place and uh, and I got my Reiki masters in that time and it was all hands-on and we practiced every single day um and when I uh, decided to come out to the city, I enrolled into school uh, for nutrition. And this time I chose a school that I wanted. I chose the best nutrition school in the whole world, the largest nutrition school. The teachers are like Dr. Andrew Weil, uh, David Avocado Wolf, uh, just really amazing people, uh, Dr. Oz. So I was learning from some of the best of the best. Uh, Chris, uh, Christine Northrup, like they all came together and built this amazing nutrition school. And um, and I really wanted to be a part of it. So I didn't have a lot of money. I used whatever I could, whatever I had at the time. And I said, I don't care. I'm going to figure out how I'm going to come up with the monthly payments. Just enroll me, please. And, um, and they did. And I, and I made every payment on time. I even paid for additional courses in cash because I was making money while in school, just putting everything to work and integrating what they were teaching me. Another reason why psychedelics are so important, right, is that they teach you that there's that in life, there is an integration process. You have your, your preparation, your experience, and then your integration. And you know, that happens whether you're traveling, that happens whether you're in school, that happens if you get out of jail or get out of the army, that happens if you give birth, that happens if you're changing careers. Um, you know, so you have your preparation into the experience, you have the experience, and then you have the integration afterwards. And I was in the, my, my experience of uh, nutrition school, I started earning money and I reinvested it into other programs that I wanted like hormone health and coaching mastery and um and business and other things like that that were really important for me at the time you know because I could do all the coaching and nutrition herbology classes that I want but if I can't sell if I can't um if I can't find the people who actually are willing to pay for my services, then I'm not actually helping anybody. So I knew that I needed that component too and, and invest it. I, that's really what I was doing for a long time, just reinvesting. And then whatever it was that I was learning, I was integrating into my life right away, either um, by scheduling in whatever action steps I was learning about, by rewriting it in form of a blog or an article, by making affirmations out of the stuff that I was learning that I wanted to implement into my life because I, it really, really resonated. You know, it was a lot of work. And, uh, and from there, you know, uh, Finn, Finn started, started getting older. I was breastfed him for three years. For three years, um, I did that. And the longer you actually breastfeed, uh, the less chances you'll develop breast cancer. And so I didn't mind. You know, I thought I was, you know, I did all the breastfeeding on demand. So I just thought I would go until the end. Um, but it turns out that 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 there was no end like the kids won't stop it's that your own body as a parent or from my experience it's my body stopped releasing the oxytocin um to make me just relax and chill and maybe that came from him maybe uh, at a certain age because the the babies um when their saliva touches the 
the mom's nipple, there's a communication that happens. Uh, the saliva tells the woman's body, the mom's body, what nutrients need to be made. Um, we do this with seeds too. If we're planting seeds and you put your saliva on the seed that you're gonna plant into the ground, that plant will grow what your specific body needs. And this is the same thing that happens with the saliva of the baby and the mom's nipple. And so I don't know if it was him getting older and stop producing or telling my body that I need the oxytocin to keep him on. Somehow there's a chemical exchange that, that happened in my body where instead of being, um, going into submission, getting, uh, getting tired and relaxed when breastfeeding, I was getting, uh, getting tense and, and angry and like, and things like that. And I'm like, there's no way that I want that going into my body or into my baby. So I'm just going to stop. I mean, he wasn't a baby anyway, he was three years old. And, um, and in around that same time, uh, my teachers, um, there was another program that was offered called uh, launch your dream book. And, and I got it for free from my school. So they actually uh, helped me publish my first book. And because I wasn't breastfeeding at the time and the, my book was getting published, I decided I was going to put Finn into a uh, daycare and that was around the same time I started microdosing again uh, too because I wasn't breastfeeding anymore. Uh, so I started working with the mushrooms again and got him into a daycare. It lasted six months. It was probably the worst six months of my life having that division from him. I felt bad. I felt like I was, um, that I was choosing a book over him. I felt like I was choosing you know, a possible future over him. And I think my first book has some, some shame around it on that, you know, I was choosing microdosing instead of breastfeeding and, you know, and, and things like that. And it wasn't necessarily like that. Like it was obviously time, but there was a lot of feelings going on, you know, a lot that, you know, even today I'm still, you know, sorting through working to understand for myself but some good things that did come out of it uh, was that my book did get published that you know I did have the opportunity to send uh, Finn to daycare uh, even though you know eventually it did come to an end and um, and, and you know then we got to develop a new relationship while he was there and a new relationship following uh, some other things that we did uh, was really work in the kitchen. I, I, I was working with um, my mentor, Dr. Dan Engel, and I would show up to his, cla to his classes. Uh, he had an integration uh, coaching circle every Wednesday. And I'd show up on time every single week. And one teaching that he had was that life is school. And so that was another thing too. Why am I putting my kid in daycare when I'd never put him into school? There was a lot of stuff around that that I didn't like, but I understand why it needed to happen at the time. I understand, you know, we're always just doing our best and sometimes our best changes depending on what's going on in life. At that time in life, the best I could do uh, was that. And, um, I, and I came back to the life of school part of it you know I was uh, making home cooking videos with Finn where he'd just work in the kitchen with me where uh, we'd make different things together uh, you know he was learning science he was he learned all of his colors he learned math he can do add and subtraction you set him in front of a book to do add and subtraction not so much but if you have him in the kitchen and it's like and you're giving him equations he can do math better than some adults that don't know how to cook <laughs> you know he learned all of his colors through the kitchen he uh he learned science he learned so so many things you know we got into the garden too you know growing your own food we got into the forest with foraging for your own food you know one of my goals as a parent is to have him be as sustainable and uh, self-reliant as possible so that he doesn't need to uh, rely on systems the way I have in my life you know part, coming back to that family karma it's like there was some stuff that you know my parents weren't able to do for me and it's my job to do that for myself 
there was some things that, uh, you know, my parents had really good skill set in and that it's been an asset for me. And Finn's going to have that same thing where he's going to have responsibility to uh, rise up in the areas that I've failed and also, you know, a huge skill set that he's developed from me in these practices that we do in our daily life because life is school. Um, yeah, oh, I'm getting the time meter alarm saying that we're running out of time here. So um, I guess some of the biggest takeaways, just to bring it back into psychedelic parenting instead of just my parenting story in general, is that there's this sense of emotional intelligence that comes up from working with these medicines. They have an intelligence of their own and that intelligence it teaches us just like how the food that we consume tells our DNA, you know, how to work properly. It tells it, you know, what release this, uh, use this for nutrients, uh, heal this. The psychedelics are doing the same thing, but it's a different kind of intelligence. And it gives us emotional intelligence and it teaches us how to emotionally regulate ourselves, how to self-regulate ourselves. And when we can do that, it has a ripple effect that helps the seven generations after us. So it's not the family karma always talking about our ancestors. Sometimes, and a lot of the time, it's also talking about the, our legacy, all of those that are coming after us. And we do need to think about this. We need to like we're conditioned especially in today's world to fear life you know it used to be like we're given a death sentence the moment we come here there is nothing to fear you know but we we're just conditioned hard and I think there's a lot of unschooling and a lot of reparenting that needs to be done in today's world it's you know be scared of a virus be scared and don't live your life and don't leave your home and don't don't do these things but I, don't live don't leave don't anything the truth is what we're here to do is to live our life and to realize that we have a long life believe that you have a long life ahead of you there's a lot of kids that are going to be growing up in this new generation, in Finn's generation, that are going to be, uh, you know, that, that have already thought that they were going to die from some virus. They already thought that that was going to happen. And we need to remind ourselves and remind our kids that we have a long, long life ahead of us, that there's a lot of work for us to do in this time, that we need to appreciate and own every single moment. And when we can be working with these kinds of medicines, we learn what our purpose in life is and we remember our passions and we remember how important it is to make sure that our passions are included into our everyday life we remember that there is a legacy there are people who come after us we remember our ancestors and our elders and we have more respect for them because we understand that where it was that they were coming from and what it was that they were going through in a different way because of the because of the uh, emotional intelligence or the intelligence that comes from these medicines they bring us reminders they bring us so many blessings and they bring us closer to ourselves uh to what we're what we're here for uh to to the bigger picture in general uh before i go i want to uh share a little um i guess a little update I've come up with my next book title. So this will be my fourth one published. My first one was Be the Change. Then I did the four week uh, plant powered menu. Uh, and recently uh, around uh, the new year put out uh, Rebirth, uh, which is the psychedelic integration guide. Uh, this next one is, um, is gonna be called Just for Today. And it's gonna be all about just honing in on your guys' routines into the integration work in general and uh, break down kind of a day for you guys. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited about it because I really want to master uh, my own routine. And the best way to master something is to teach it. So what, what Yoga Vijan said and what I always love to do is that if you want to learn something, you read about it. If you want to understand something, you write about it. And this will be me writing the book. And if you want to master something you teach it 
So teaching it would be publishing it and, and releasing it onto the world for you guys. Once I've got it all uh, honed in for myself, once I understand. the feedback and support which I always love and always open to uh, another thing is uh, just in honor of Mother's Day I'm going to um, give a special offer normally uh, coaching with me is uh, 125 uh, an hour uh, you can do that in two different ways you can either do a monthly package where we're meeting every week for 15 minutes or you can do 125 uh, each session for an hour session. Uh, what I'm going to do today is offer anybody, uh, you know, dads, moms, uh, single folk, uh, you know, the, you know, whoever, whoever's here, whoever's showing up, whoever's watching, whoever wants to celebrate this day, whoever's got reparenting uh, to do, or, you know, just wants to you know, better themselves, do the self-actualization actuation work, self-actualization work. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. You know, if you want to better yourself, you want to become the change you want to see in the world. Let's, uh, let's set up. I'm, my offer is going to be $108 for the month. And I'm looking forward to uh, po posting that out into the group. So you guys can connect with me and get the most out of this deal and the months to come. I love you all so much. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Have a great day.